If you stopped eating today, not next week, not someday, but right now, what would your body burn first, fat or muscle? It's a question that sparks fear for anyone who cares about strength, longevity, or fasting. Most people imagine their hard-earned muscle disappearing the moment they skip a meal, as if the body panics and starts tearing itself apart. But that belief isn't just wrong; it's the opposite of what your biology is designed to do. Inside you lives an ancient survival program. A system built long before food was available on every corner, and it decides what to save and what to sacrifice with remarkable precision. To make this journey real, imagine someone like Mark, a 41-year-old American who starts a fast not to punish himself, but to finally understand what his body is truly capable of, and what begins inside him from the very first hour. Will challenge everything you thought you knew about fasting, because the truth is this: your body isn't fragile; it's strategic. And the real story of fasting starts long before muscle is ever on the line. For the first full day of Mark's fast, nothing on the outside looks dramatic. He still walks around his house, answers emails, maybe feels a few waves of hunger. But nothing close to the muscle-melting emergency people imagine. Inside, though, his body is already shifting gears with quiet precision. The glucose from his last meal fuels him through the morning, and as it fades, his liver steps in like a built-in power bank, releasing glycogen to keep his blood sugar steady. During this entire phase, Mark's muscle isn't in danger. In fact, his body raises two powerful hormones, adrenaline and growth hormone, specifically to protect his lean tissue and keep energy focused and clear. A pinch of electrolytes in his water makes the process smoother, keeping his nerves steady and cravings low. And as that power bank slowly drains, his metabolism prepares for its first major decision. A shift that will determine what kind of fuel he burns next. Somewhere between the 24th and 36th hour, Mark's body approaches its first true crossroads. With glycogen almost gone and insulin dropping to some of its lowest levels, a biochemical doorway opens, one his ancestors relied on during long hunts and brutal winters. This is where the ancient fuel switch flips. Fat cells begin releasing stored triglycerides, sending fatty acids into Mark's bloodstream like emergency rations. His liver transforms them into ketones, a cleaner, longer-lasting source of energy that his brain quickly learns to love. Suddenly, the hunger that felt sharp yesterday softens into something distant. His focus sharpens. His mood steadies, and he feels an unexpected sense of clarity rising beneath the surface. And through all of this, one truth stands firm: his muscle is still protected. Protein breakdown remains low because the body knows muscle equals survival. Yet even as this new energy system takes over, a deeper transformation is preparing itself. One that goes far beyond fuel. By the time Mark moves into the 36th hour, ketones are no longer the backup plan; they've become the primary power source. His brain, usually dependent on glucose, now runs on this clean, steady fuel with surprising ease. That inner fog lifts. Thoughts feel organized, almost streamlined. Hunger quiets down. Shifting from a shout to a whisper, and behind the scenes, growth hormone surges, acting like a protective barrier around his muscles and sending a clear message throughout his body: preserve strength, burn fat first. If Mark chooses gentle movement, a walk around the block, a stretch, light activity, 
he reinforces that signal even more, reminding his biology that muscle is still required. Nothing about this stage is chaotic. It's coordinated, intentional, and deeply rooted in human evolution. But as smooth and steady as these hours feel, the body is preparing for the next threshold. A moment when it stops simply shifting fuels and begins cleaning house from the inside out in ways most people never realize. As Mark steps into his second full day without food, something remarkable begins. Not dramatic on the outside, but profound on the inside. With insulin now low and ketones rising, his cells activate autophagy, a built-in repair system that rarely gets the spotlight it deserves. Despite the scary nickname self-eating, autophagy is closer to an elite cleanup crew. It hunts down damaged proteins, broken mitochondria, and dysfunctional cellular fragments, then recycles them into usable energy. Instead of sacrificing muscle, Mark's body chooses to burn cellular junk, treating debris as fuel long before touching anything essential. His mind becomes unusually clear, as if someone wiped down the foggy glass inside his head. Inflammation drops. Focus sharpens. Hunger no longer feels like an emergency, just a gentle reminder. And if Mark keeps drinking water with electrolytes, this phase becomes surprisingly smooth. But even as his body renews itself with almost surgical intelligence, one question lingers beneath the surface. How long can this balance hold before the body must make a harder choice? By the time Mark reaches day three, his body isn't breaking down. It's doubling down. This is the phase many people fear, but science says the opposite. His metabolism shifts into preservation mode, a strategy crafted by evolution to protect strength during scarcity. Growth hormone doesn't just rise, it soars, reaching levels several times higher than normal, acting like a shield wrap around his lean tissue. Protein breakdown slows to a crawl, while fat oxidation takes center stage, supplying nearly all of his energy. Ketones keep his brain alert, steady, and surprisingly calm. Mark might even feel lighter, clearer, more focused than he did earlier in the week. NASA studies and metabolic war research confirm the same pattern. During these early fasting days, muscle remains remarkably safe when hydration and the electrolytes stay consistent. But even in this efficient rhythm, his body quietly watches its own reserves, knowing that every fuel tank eventually reaches its edge. As Mark entered day seven, a subtle shift begins. Not a dramatic crash, but a quiet recalibration. His fat stores have carried him smoothly through the week, fueling his brain with ketones and keeping his muscles protected. But now, his body starts monitoring its reserves with sharper attention. Cortisol rises slightly, not to harm him, but to maintain blood sugar for the few cells that still rely on glucose. Muscle is still safe, but the protective buffer is thinner than before. Mark feel a little slower, a bit more aware of his energy dipping in waves. Nothing alarming yet, just his biology whispering, we're approaching the border. And as that whisper grows steadier, the body prepares for its most reluctant transition, one it avoids as long as possible, deciding whether it's time to sacrifice what it's been guarding all along. By day 10, Mark's internal landscape changes again, quietly, honestly, and with the precision only a survival system can deliver. His fat stores are no longer abundant, and although ketones remain high, they signal that the system is running near its upper limit. This is the stage where protein breakdown finally increases, though not in the dramatic way the myths describe. 
His body starts by dismantling the least essential proteins first. Old enzymes, faulty cellular structures, leftover components that can be spared. It's a measured strategy, almost like stripping spare parts before touching the engine. But as the days stretch beyond 10, that hierarchy shifts. Mark feels weaker, slower, more deliberate in his movement. These are the first real signs that his body is nearing its threshold. If he pushes further, the biology that once fiercely protected him will begin to trade muscle for survival, a decision it always makes reluctantly and only when it must. As Mark ends his fast, one truth becomes impossible to ignore. His body was never working against him. It was protecting him, adapting for him, and executing a survival blueprint older than civilization. Every fuel shift, every ketone rise, every wave of hunger was part of an ancient logic designed to keep him alive without sacrificing strength until absolutely necessary. And that's the part most people never understand. Fasting isn't just the absence of food. It's the presence of strategy. Your body isn't fragile. It's resilient. It's deliberate. It's built to endure. And the more you learn to listen to these rhythms, the way Mark did, the more control you gain over your health, your energy, and your longevity. If you're ready to see how fasting transforms another vital system, your immune system, the next story will take you even deeper into the science behind your own survival.